Before I became the mother of a little girl, I was certain about one thing. My house would never explode into Pepto-Bismol pink. There would be no princessification of everything from a bath mat to a sippy cup. If I ever had a girl, which after two sons seemed to me nearly impossible, my daughter would be, above all, an independent thinker. When I took my two sons, then two and four, to the Magic Kingdom, and they got to meet Buzz Lightyear, I literally wept. <laughs> but all the little girls in their stiff polyester finery and prom updos from the bibbity bobbity boutique <laughs> just made me roll my eyes. First of all, it's a little hot in Orlando for synthetic fabrics. <laughs> but to me, these girls didn't even look cute. They looked mass-produced, tacky, boring. I conceived my daughter two weeks after getting home from that trip to Disney World. Two and a half years later, Maggie was the very definition of self-esteem, a force who did gymnastics all day long. Not in the muted gray French jumpers I had chosen, but instead without fail in the fuchsia polka dot bathing suit her babysitter had given her, <laughs> paired with sparkly tights for your cooler temperatures. This early Belinda Carlisle look was not what I wanted my daughter to wear. But it was most unquestionably what she wanted. That summer, I took Maggie to a swimming pool, and tossed on the chair next to us were a pair of Disney princess pink plastic wedge high heels encrusted with statement jewels. <laughs> the young owner of these shoes did not appear to be around, so I asked Maggie if she would like me to help her try one on. The shoe fit her dainty foot perfectly. And in that moment, my daughter became Cinderella, claiming what had been rightly hers all along. And I became at peace with the inevitability of it all. If my daughter wanted a tragic, horrible, sleeping beauty light up backpack, if that made her feel confident and secure, who cares? I mean, I wanted her to choose cooler things so that I, as her curator, would seem <laughs> hip and cool by association. But one Tinkerbell toothbrush does not a honey boo boo make. <laughs> Plus, it was just a phase. It would all be over soon. This year, Maggie turned five. One day, she brought home Olivia and the Fairy Princesses from the school library. I had always loved Olivia, the independent-minded piglet in robust red, and I looked forward to her ride take on the entire subgenre of princesses who can also fly around on tiny gossamer wings. But this book was about how Olivia was so much cooler than all the other girls in her class, a bunch of vapid lemmings who just wanted to be princesses for Halloween. I read this to my daughter four days after she was a princess for Halloween. <laughs> a week later, Maggie was invited to her best friend's princess dress-up birthday party. We were driving across town when Maggie announced from the back seat, Mommy, you know I don't really like pink anymore, right? Now I like just gold. <laughs> after another crosstown blocks journey, and I don't really like princesses anymore either. What are you talking about, I said. I'm too big to like princesses. We stopped at a red light. I turned around to face her. Maggie, you do like princesses. <laughs> and that is okay. Green light, we drove another block. Mommy, you know my pink princess dress? Yes. We should give that to a baby. <laughs> The day was coming when my daughter would no longer value princesses or pink above all else, but she was telling me this from her car seat. <laughs> she is a baby. What if she thinks she has to change who she is to meet some arbitrary notion of what's acceptable? And, and what if being a princess was protecting her from that all along? I blame you, Olivia. <laughs> but I blame myself, too. When my daughter said she didn't like princesses anymore, I think it's because we kind of made her feel like she had to say that. And all along, all those years of bedtime fairy tales had been warning me, be careful what you wish for. 
Maggie and I got to that princess party. She hung close to me for a few minutes, hesitating, unsure what the properly restrained response of a five-year-old should be. Only when she saw that this place was magical, was safe, my daughter chose a gown in her new favorite color, just gold, and dangly earrings, and for 90 minutes more, she was a beautiful baby-bellied princess. And anyone who wants to take the power of that sparkly scepter away from her is gonna have to go through me. <laughs>